Hey guys, it's Miles Parker here, and in this video I'm going to teach you how to get your ex-girlfriend back using a proven five-step plan. Now, just a heads up, this is going to be a brief overview of the process you need to follow to get your ex-girlfriend back. For tons more tips, advice, and resources on getting back with your ex-girlfriend, check out the personal coaching site over at exgirlfriendplan.com by clicking the link below this video. So again, if you're looking for a much more detailed step-by-step -step plan of action for getting her back, there's a more in-depth video presentation that you can watch for free by clicking the link below this video at exgirlfriendplan.com. So figuring out how to get your ex-girlfriend back really isn't the hard part. The hard part is keeping her. After all, she left you once. What is to stop her from leaving you again? What is the point of getting your ex-girlfriend back if you can't keep her permanently? My name is Miles, and I'm here to help you through this painful breakup and hopefully get your ex-girl back. Now, I say hopefully because nothing in life is certain, and I can't guarantee that you will get your ex back. I can, however, guarantee that if you follow this plan, your chances of getting your ex-girlfriend back will increase significantly. So what is this video all about? This video is divided into five steps. I've done so because this way you have a step-by-step -step plan that you can follow to get your ex-girlfriend back. It's important to have a plan to follow because after a breakup you're hurt, emotionally drained, and most of all, confused. And during this state of confusion, you're bound to make a lot of mistakes that will actually hurt your chances of getting back together. In fact, it'd be better to just do nothing at all. I've seen people make these mistakes over and over again in my two years of experience helping people with breakups. Having a plan gives you a sense of direction and removes all of the confusion. A plan will give you something to look forward to when you're feeling down and unsure about yourself. A plan will give you hope. This video is that plan. But what are those mistakes that I'm talking about? I'm glad you asked because the first part of this video guide is precisely about these mistakes that men so commonly make. Step one, the instincts, aka the deadly mistakes. I call this part the instincts because all these mistakes are a direct result of people following their instincts. Most of the advice in this five-step plan is counterintuitive, but it works. When you watch it, you will understand why, and it will all start to make sense. So let's start by going over the deadly mistakes that you should avoid at any cost. Deadly mistake one, calling and texting her all the time. Now, this is a letter I got from one of my clients a while back. This is very typical. Miles, we broke up eight days ago. Since then, I have messaged her every day, constantly, and she barely replies. I have to text her a hundred times before she replies just once. I really love her and want to be with her, but I don't understand why she's acting like this. She said she loved me, and then suddenly, this happens. Well, that's the story of around 80% of the guys who are desperate to get their ex back. It's a huge mistake to text and call your ex all the time. In fact, it's a huge mistake to call her even once. Your instincts tell you that if you stay in contact with your ex, they will not forget about you, and therefore increases your chance that they hopefully come back. But again, we have to do what's counterintuitive. Even the calls that might seem casual to you look needy and desperate to your ex. But it doesn't really work that way. In fact, every time you call or text your ex-girlfriend, you are showing her that you're a needy person and you're miserable without them. This neediness is unattractive and pushes your ex-girlfriend further away, even if you don't realize it. You should instead be extremely careful whenever you go out drinking, for example. You might end up calling your ex and making a fool of yourself. So whenever you go out drinking, and this tip is quite important in and of itself, have a friend with you who can stop you from making this mistake. But if I don't call or text my ex-girlfriend, how can I get her back? Well, of course you will need to eventually contact her in a certain way at a certain time that will make her feel attracted to you again, and I explain exactly how to do this in step four of this video. Deadly mistake number two, begging and trying to use pity. If begging worked after a breakup, no one will ever break up with anybody. You see, she decided to leave you, and she is prepared to go through your begging and pleading. Whatever the reason for the breakup was, it's not going to change just because you're begging. The only thing that begging will do is make you look like a weak and insecure person. Now, unfortunately, humans don't look as cute as cats while begging, as you can see from the picture here. Similarly, your instincts will also make you believe that if you just show your ex-girlfriend that you can't live without her, she will naturally take you back. Your thought pattern becomes something like this. 
If she knows how miserable I am without her, she will come back. Or maybe, if only she knows that I can't continue my life without her, she'll take me back. It seems logical, but again, your instincts are screwing with you. Trust me, no one takes their ex back out of pity. No girl is attracted to a guy who is miserable. And even if your ex came back because of this, do you really want her to be with you just because of pity? It's not a sufficient reason. Or do you want her to respect you and love you like it was before? Deadly mistake number three, letting her walk all over you. Again, your instincts will tell you that if you just agree to everything your ex wants, they will come back. Your instincts will tell you that your needs, your values, your desires, your goals, they don't matter. Your instincts will tell you that the only thing that matters is to get your ex-girlfriend back. And for that, you can sacrifice nearly everything. So you let your ex walk all over you. You become the doormat. You agree to the most ridiculous demands your ex has. But your instincts tell you it's okay. It's worth it. Because having your ex-girlfriend in your life is the only thing that matters. Well, guess what? Agreeing to everything your ex says is not going to bring her back. In fact, it's only going to make her respect you less. You see, nobody wants to be with somebody they don't respect. And even if they do come back, they will leave shortly, realizing they have no respect for you as a person. Deadly mistake number four, showering her with affection. Your instincts tell you that if your ex-girlfriend just realizes how much you love her and how much you care about her, they will naturally come back. You just need to make them believe that no one in the world will ever love them the way you do. Naturally, right? How can she reject you when she realizes how much you love her, right? Well, again, it doesn't work that way. The truth is, she already knows that you love her. That's the obvious point. How much you adore her and how much you care about her. But she still decided to break up after all. So showering her with affection is not going to help you. In fact, the more you smother her, the more trapped they will feel. And that will just make her want to get away from you as soon as possible. And the last deadly mistake, number five, freaking out when your ex-girlfriend starts dating, because it might happen. And of course, the thought of your ex-girlfriend being with some other guy is a gut-wrenching one. But in reality, it's not that bad as we make it out to be. We will get into that, but before now, let's take a look at how your instincts react when you find out your ex is dating someone else, and how you're going to have to suppress those instincts at all costs. If I don't do anything right now, she'll fall in love with this new guy and forget about me forever. So I better go over there and do everything that this video has told me not to do, including begging, using pity, telling her how much I love her, agreeing to do all their conditions, aka the doormat. And if they don't open the door, I'll just stand outside and call and text them all day. It will be even better to tell my ex-girlfriend how this new guy is totally wrong for her and what a big mistake she is making by being in a relationship with this guy. If you didn't realize it by now, your instincts and your mind go into panic mode when you find out your ex is dating someone new. In most cases, you freak out and make all of the mistakes mentioned above, because it's just your instincts are too strong at that point. The truth is, your ex-girlfriend is most probably in a rebound relationship, and almost all rebound relationships end sooner rather than later, luckily for you. It sucks, but rebound relationships are a way for many people to deal with breakups. Fortunately for you, it's one of the most ineffective ways to move on. So, just because she's in a rebound relationship doesn't mean she will forget about you and move on. In fact, it just means the opposite. It means that they are having a hard time moving on, and as long as they are in this rebound relationship, they can't work on moving on with their life. It's as simple as that. Now, a rebound relationship is like a cigarette. It's unhealthy, it provides a false sense of calmness, and it ends when the flame is over. No pun intended. The faster you smoke, the faster it ends. The most important thing for you to do while your ex-girlfriend is in this rebound relationship is to just be cool about it. Whatever happens, do not tell your ex-girlfriend to break up with her rebound partner. Let it be her idea, which in the vast majority of cases will happen anyway. They have a huge hole in their life after breaking up with you, which they're trying to fill with someone new. They will soon realize that a rebound relationship cannot actually fill the emptiness, and they will end their relationship on their own without any uh, input necessary on your part. So, now what if you've already made some of these mistakes, and if you're watching this video, like most men, you probably already have. Chances are you've already made at least one of these mistakes after the breakup, in fact. But don't worry, even the wisest monks in the Himalayas and masters of psychology from Harvard usually end up making these mistakes after a breakup. It's just too much human nature. It's just in the nature of human beings to try and hold on to something that is just so precious to them. So don't beat yourself up over it. 
the most important thing for you to do right now is realize that these mistakes will not help you get her back and to stop doing them right away. It is possible to do damage control if you start right now. Move on to the next step of the plan, which is going to repair all the damage you've caused until now. So, step two of this plan. No contact, aka giving yourself time and space. Now, if you've been searching on the internet about breakups and getting your ex-girlfriend back online, you know that there's a huge amount of talk about the no contact rule. That's because it's so simple and very effective. All you have to do is stop all communication with your ex-girlfriend for a short period of time. Now, this includes all communication. No calling. No texting. No Facebook messaging. No online contact of any kind, such as IM or Twitter. No accidentally bumping into them. And you know what that means. And no hanging out with common friends in hopes of just randomly beating your ex. Now, although it seems hard, why are we doing this? Well, for three reasons. One, your girlfriend needs some space and time to remove all the negative associations from the breakup and start naturally missing you. You see, people have a common misconception that if you don't contact your ex, they will just forget about you. But in reality, if you don't contact your ex, you will give her the time to miss you more, naturally, and she will be wondering all the time why you are not contacting her. Remember all the mistakes in part one of this guide. Every one of them made your ex think of you as a needy person. By not contacting her, you immediately become not needy in her mind, and you also are in a safety zone because you have no chance to make any mistakes. Number two, you also need some space and time. You need to get a hold of yourself and gain some perspective. The fact is, you're a mess after the breakup, and you need to calm down and analyze your relationship thoroughly to realize whether or not being with your ex is in your best interest in the first place. It could be that you're just missing your ex-girlfriend. You need to learn to enjoy your life without her. You need to prove to yourself that you can be happy without your ex. You will eventually realize that you don't need your ex-girlfriend to be happy. Ironically, that helps you get her. Maybe you'll still want her, but here's the key. There's a big difference between needing something and wanting something. And when you want versus need, you'll be in a much healthier position to get her back. Finally, number three, you must become an attractive and happy person during this time. You need to take a step back and reevaluate your life. You should make a lot of positive changes in your life. When you meet your ex after the no contact period, you want her to be attracted to the new you. And the best way to do that is to start enjoying life and being an overall happy person. Don't take this point lightly. This could be the difference between getting your ex-girlfriend back or losing her forever. You can't just let time pass by and show her the same old you. It's got to be the new you. So, of course, the most common question is how long is this no contact period? And basically, the no contact period should be as long as it takes you to get yourself together and feel great about your life without your ex. In my experience, it can take up to 30 days in most cases. However, in extreme cases, it could range anywhere from two months to six months, depending on how severe the breakup was and your emotional state. Now, should I tell my ex-girlfriend that I'm doing no contact? Ideally, no, it defeats the purpose. You want her to wonder what happened to you and why you're not contacting her. You want it to be in her mind as much as you can. And purposely telling her you're not contacting her for some time will defeat this purpose. You want to create mystery. However, if your ex is currently calling you every day or texting you every day, then yes, you should let her know that you don't want her to contact you for a short period of time. Don't give them any specifics. Just tell them don't contact you until you decide to contact them. You have to keep the ball in your court. Let her know you need some space and time right now. Wouldn't it be rude if I don't contact my ex-girlfriend? Another common question. Wasn't it rude of your ex-girlfriend to break your heart and leave you begging her to take you back, right? And yet, you'll still do anything to be with her. Sometimes, if you think about it, rudeness is not as bad as you think it is. Besides, you're doing no contact for your own mental peace and well-being. There's nothing rude about taking care of yourself. Now, should I answer my ex texts during no contact? Just like phone calls, again, no, absolutely not. Whatever happens, don't answer their texts. Another question, should I answer my ex calls during no contact? See, people keep asking these questions, but the answer is very obvious. It's no, you should not answer your ex-girlfriend's calls no matter what, no matter how much it goes against your instincts again. The only exception to this is if you're uh, close to ending your no contact and you're already feeling great about your life. If you think that talking to your ex will have you uh, obsessing about her again, then you can't answer the call. Now, what if my ex-girlfriend moves on during the no contact? What if my ex meets some other guy and gets married during no contact? What if my ex forgets about me during no contact? This is the most common fear about no contact. They're good questions and legitimate, but the answer to all of them is no, she won't. If you and your ex-girlfriend were in any type of serious relationship, then she will not be able to move on so quickly. 
In fact, no contact is only going to make her miss you more and remember the good times you had and the good things about you. You have to take a leap of faith over here. The alternative to no contact is being a creep and texting and stalking your ex-girlfriend all the time, which will probably lead to a restraining order against you. No, no joke, I've actually seen guys in this situation. You really don't have much of an option here. Another question, can I make the no contact shorter, like a week or a few days? No. Sorry, you want to give your ex a couple of days break from your avalanche of texts and then bombard them again after a couple of days? No, it won't work. It takes time for people to remove negative associations after a breakup and start missing their ex naturally. You have to give it to her. Besides, you have to prove to yourself that you can live without your ex-girlfriend for at least 30 days. And more importantly, you have to work on yourself and become a more confident and happy person. Unless you make a positive change in yourself, your ex-girlfriend will not be able to convince herself to get back together with you. So moving on to the uh, third major step of this plan, taking care of yourself, aka what to do during your no-contact free time. Now this is the part where most people screw up. No contact will be of no use unless you try to actually make a positive change in your life during this time. If you just want to stay at home and just be miserable for the next month, things are not going to change even after the no contact period. Yes, you need to grieve after a breakup, and yes, there's some benefit in spending some time alone grieving and analyzing your relationship, and I'll get to that later. But at one point, you have to go out there and do something with your life. You can't just keep uh, analyzing the old relationship again and again in your mind. It's not healthy. So, positive changes in your appearance, number one. Making a positive change in your physical appearance is going to give you a fresh look. You're going to feel new and you're going to feel better. And when your ex sees you after the no-contact period, she's going to see a new you, physically at first, of course. Here are a few things you can do. Get a haircut. Just go to a hairstylist and find out what is in fashion these days. Uh, get your teeth clean. A beautiful smile, especially with whitening, is very attractive. Next, get in the best shape of your life. Go to the gym and sweat it out. This is also great for your mental health, as working out releases endorphins, which make you happy, which is something you need right now. Uh, something as simple as getting new clothes. They'll definitely make you feel better about yourself. The point is, whatever you do, don't do anything drastic right now. You don't want to make any physical changes right now that you might regret for the rest of your life, like getting a tattoo of a broken heart, for example. And I've seen cases like that before. Then there's positive changes uh, in your mentality. Being a happy and confident person is probably the most important thing when it comes to getting your ex-girlfriend back. You need to realize that happiness and confidence is something that you can get by working on yourself and yourself alone. Here are a few ideas that will help, get, uh, help you gain more confidence and become a happier person. Again, these are just suggestions. Feel free to do what you want here. Uh, instead of sitting at home eating ice cream and watching TV, go out and do something to make yourself feel better, such as give yourself some time to greet. Now, I know how hard it is to be happy after a breakup. I remember I was a complete mess for at least two weeks. I didn't sleep properly, didn't eat properly, and I was just thinking about my ex-girlfriend all day and nothing else. In a way, this period is necessary for you and it's part of the healthy process. You give yourself some time to grieve every day. If you want to feel sad and sorry for yourself, go ahead and do it. But make sure you always do something every day as well to make yourself feel good about yourself. Number two, write in a journal. Write your thoughts and your feelings down. Writing is therapeutic, and it's probably going to help you release all those emotions from the inside in a safe way. Number three, of course, go out with friends. Spend time with your loved ones. Your friends and family are those people who are always there for you, especially at times like this, and who always love to spend time with you. Go out and have a good time with them. It really helps. Number four, do some meditation. Uh, be aware of yourself, know your weaknesses and strengths. Be proud of yourself. Accept yourself for who you are. That's what confidence is all about. Neediness, which is very unattractive, comes from doubts within yourself, whereas confidence comes from awareness and accepting yourself. Number five, and this is a big one, actually go on a date with another girl. This is absolutely essential if you're watching this. Then I will recommend that you definitely go out on a few dates before you're ending the no-contact period with your ex-girlfriend. It's absolutely imperative for you to get some perspective right now, and meeting new people, especially a member of the opposite sex, is the best way to do it. Now, analyzing your relationship, you do have to ask yourself the hard questions at some point. Why do you want to get back with your ex-girlfriend to begin with? Now, if you answer things like, uh, I love her, I can't live without her, I'm miserable without my ex-girlfriend, she was the only one for me, I can't imagine a life without my ex. If these are your answers, then you're suffering from what we call post-breakup denial and bargaining. 
Denial and bargaining are two of the many stages of grief after a breakup, and it's extremely common for everyone to want to get their ex back after a breakup, of course. However, it's not always the right choice. Uh, these thought patterns are very natural, but you've got to fight them. For example, even if your relationship with your ex-girlfriend was abusive, you might want to rekindle it just because you're missing them. Missing something is not a good enough reason to get it back. Our mind often confuses the act of missing someone with loving them. It's normal to miss someone after you've been with them for a long time, but it doesn't necessarily mean you still love her, and that's the key difference most people miss. Look at it like this. Every relationship has problems, fights, and disagreements. But if you two broke up, then there was something very wrong with your relationship. You need to analyze what went wrong and realize whether or not it's a good idea to get back together. In fact, that should be the first step of all. Are you sure your ex didn't have any cons? Everybody has pros and cons. If you think with your heart, you will just hear that you love your ex and you want her back. Instead, try to think with your mind. Be logical. Analyze the pros and cons of your relationship. Analyze the pros and cons of your ex-girlfriend. Analyze what your goals in life are and whether or not the relationship with your ex aligns with those goals, whether or not she aligns with your goals. Remember, your ex-girlfriend will not make you happy. Only you yourself can make yourself happy. And the only way you can do it is by realizing your purpose and your goals in life and pursuing them. Do you really think you can have a happy and long-lasting relationship with your ex-girlfriend? Do you really think that the reason you broke up is no big deal? You're making a huge decision right now, right? So you better make sure that it's the right one. You see, you have 30 days to do it, so don't rush into it. Take your time, relax, and do things that make you feel better about your life, like you would have done even before you ever met her. When you start being happy in life without your ex, you will realize whether or not getting her back is the right decision for you. And that's extremely important before you move on to the next step, which is all about contacting her, the part you've been waiting for, right? Something you've probably already done, but without going through the appropriate waiting stages first. So here it is, the most important step four, contacting your ex-girlfriend, a.k.a. reattraction. Remember when your ex-girlfriend left you? They thought of you as a needy, clingy, and desperate guy with little to no self-respect. After not being in contact with you for a while, she must be wondering what the heck happened to you, right? She will slowly start to forget that image of yours, that guy who was ne the needy and desperate one, and she'll start remembering the things she liked about you. She will start remembering the things that she found attractive in you, like it was before you, the, when, the first, when you got together in the very beginning. And that's when you contact her. You talk to her, and then meet her. Just as she lays eyes on you, Boom, there it is, the moment you've been waiting for. That's the new and improved you, you version 2.0, the one you've been working on during the no-contact period. They can't help but wonder what brought so much positive change in you. And what brought that change in you was the time apart, the healthy time apart that you had. Now you look amazing. You smell amazing. You look like you're doing great in your life. You look like you've been working out. You look happy. You've been doing your homework, right? You look confident. Sexy, fun, and attractive. You look like a catch. Why did I break up with you again? That's what your ex is going to be saying. So, for this to happen, the dream scenario, of course, the right scenario, is you need two things. Number one, you should actually bring a positive change in your life during the no-contact phase, as we talked about, and become that confident, happy, and attractive person. Uh, and number two, you should contact your ex-girlfriend and meet them somewhere. Eventually, yes, you will actually get to that point. Now, if you've been following this video guide till now, then you, you know how to go about the first point. That's what we've been covering. So now let's get to the part I know you've all been waiting for, which is straight to the second point, is contacting your ex-girlfriend and actually meeting her after all this no-contact time. Now, before you contact her, there's a checklist of things you need to make sure you've done so that you don't screw up that first meeting, that all-important first meeting. Make sure you follow the no-contact rule for at least one month. Okay, check. You're no longer a mess as you were after the breakup, right? You made a few positive changes in your life, that's the key one, and you're absolutely sure that getting back with your ex-girlfriend is a good decision after you've gone through the analysis yourself. And you've gone on at least one date during no-contact. That's a bare minimum, by the way. You've accepted the breakup and you're okay with the fact that you may never get your ex back and this might never work out for you. Ironically, that's the state of mind you need to be in to actually have the highest chance of getting her back. 
you've accepted the fact that even if you don't get your ex-girlfriend back, you'll be fine since there are endless opportunities in the world to find love and happiness. And with that frame of mind, you're liable to get her back. Now, there are two ways that you can actually go about contacting your ex. One is through a letter or email, and the other one is through text messaging, which is, of course, very popular these days. You can also call your ex-girlfriend, but I don't recommend this at first. Instead, I recommend you first build up some attraction using uh, text messages and letters or email, anything except calls before you build up to the actual call, uh, before calling her. So what about an actual uh, physical letter? Wouldn't it be nice to receive a handwritten letter in the mail once in a while? A handwritten letter is a right a great way to contact your ex right after you finish no contact. A handwritten letter stands out in this day and age of digital technology. And of course, if you want to, you can use email as well. The point is, don't use the phone call to start. Now this letter, this initial letter after the no contact period serves three purposes. One, to let your ex-girlfriend know that you've accepted the breakup and you think that it's for the best. You're letting her know that you're no longer the needy and desperate guy that was refusing to accept the breakup. That's the first thing. The second part of the letter is to apologize for any of your inappropriate behavior after the breakup. And I feel like most guys, there's probably been some of it. You want to make sure that everything from the past is forgiven and forgotten. And the third purpose of this first letter is to let her know of something exciting that's been happening in your life. Now the key is to don't reveal too much here. Just tell her something good is happening in your life. You'd love to talk about it, but not right now. Just give her a little something to think about because you both need some time and space after all. You want to give her something to chew on. She'll be thinking about what's happening in your life, and this will build her curiosity, and she'll want to call or text you to talk about it. So you're using curiosity to get your ex-girlfriend to be the one to contact you, not the other way around. Of course, something must be actually happening in your life, and that's what you were supposed to be working on during the no-contact phase. That's why creating a positive change in your life is absolutely important before contacting your ex. So, the text messages. How about the actual text messages uh, process that you go through as well, which are almost everybody uses them now? Well, first of all, text messages should ideally be used after sending that initial handwritten letter or email, which built up the attraction. You can't do that through short text messages. You can even skip the handwritten letter and move on directly to text messages if you want, however, though. You, you know your situation and your ex-girlfriend better than anyone, so it's your decision whether or not you want to just use text messages just the letter, or both. Now, what I recommend in most cases, in my experience, is you use either one or both of these before actually calling her. No matter what, at least one of these uh, written-based messages happens before the first verbal call. Now, text messages are a great way for building attraction with your ex-girlfriend. They're short, they're personal, and you can be sure that they will read your texts. Unlike email, where it's not as clear. If used correctly, you can condition your ex to light up in excitement whenever she sees a message from you, instead of ignoring it or uh, getting annoyed as she was before. It doesn't matter where they are. Your text will reach them. That's the beauty of cell phones. And they'll be excited to get a text from you if done properly. The key to using text messages to get her back is to be very subtle. Never ever directly talk about your feelings or about the past relationship with her. You want her to associate text messages as something positive and fun. So here are the rules for texting your ex-girlfriend. Never send them an empty message. An empty message is something that doesn't say anything or doesn't give her any hook, anything to talk about. Now, these are some examples of these deadly empty messages. You might send a text message that just says something like, hey, or hey, how are you? Or what you've been doing lately? Or I miss you. These are all completely useless text messages that serve no point, and they give her absolutely nothing to follow up on. So never the, the next key thing about text messages is to never ever talk about your feelings and about getting back together. So definitely in text messages, you wouldn't say something like, I love you, I miss you, I want you back in my life, I wish you were back together, etc. Uh, so you might say, I'm miserable without you. These are things that you really might feel the urge to say, but they're the complete opposite of what you want to write in those text messages. Never argue or say something negative over text. That's actually the worst thing you could do. Now, if you just, for example, people might send something like, if you just show in a little more effort, we could have been great together. A text like that is deadly. It's the exact opposite of what you should be doing. 
Now, here are a few of the actual positive things that you should do while using text messages. Something happened in your life that reminded you of her. So here's a great text for that. You could say, this is just a total example. Hey, I just watched the new season of Arrested Development. It reminded me of you. I actually had a smile on my face. See, a nice, simple, little positive message. Or something like, hey, I just read the new Harry Potter book. I'm so glad you never told me the ending. Thanks. Something light, funny, non-committal. Remember her of the good moments you had together. This is another category of good text messages. Ones that remind her of the good times you had together. This is an example. Hey, I was just thinking about the time we went skydiving together. Man, that was exciting. I'm glad we did that. It's referring to positive times in the past. Here's another example. Hey, remember the little restaurant where we had our first anniversary date? I just crossed it and it looks like they're closing it down. It's a shame because we had such a great time there that day. Again, you're bringing back her state of mind, her memories to the positive times she had with you before. Now, the other category of text messages, these ones are great and really powerful, is they let her know that you're having fun in your life right now and meeting new people, but not in a way that's rubbing it in her face. That's why they have to be done tactfully. For example, hey, I just saw a romantic movie with a friend. The ending reminded me of you. Here's another example. Hey, I'm going to Hawaii for the weekend with a friend. Do you remember the name of the hotel we stayed in when we went last year? You see, you're not rubbing it in her face, but it is bringing those memories back to the surface. And maybe just a hint of jealousy, too. Now, there are tons of other things you can do with text, but the key point remains the same. Be subtle, be positive, and be fun. Right now, you just want to go from the creepy ex to a fun text buddy, which is a great place to be in at this point. Of course, you'll be moving things forward slowly, in incremental steps. When you think it's the right time, you can actually go ahead and ask her out. So, the next step is, of course, asking your ex-girlfriend out on a date. Now, don't call it a date. That's the first thing. I repeat, don't call it a date. If you do, your ex will put up her defenses faster than Garfield finds lasagna, okay? You don't want her thinking that you're looking to get back together. Not at first. At least not now. You want her to go out on with you as a friend to begin with. This is critical. Cannot state that enough. And then you can build up attraction while you're with her later on. Now, if you've done your homework correctly, you'll be oozing confidence and attractiveness out of every inch of your body right now. Everything that you've built up during that no-contact phase. And this works doubly as effective on your ex-girlfriend compared to any other girl in the world. And why is that? Because she was already attracted to you at one point in time. You already have that working in your favor. And you're not a stranger to them. You're someone very familiar who looks very attractive to them. Now, the best way to ask her out is to give her a call. You see, it finally comes down to the actual call, but look at the amount of homework you've done building up to this stage. It's possible they might require a slight push, a simple, come on, it'll be fun, or, hey, it's just coffee, what's the harm? That should be sufficient. However, if they're not responding at first, don't go overboard in pushing them, like, come on, just go out with me once, or please, pretty please, or you broke up with me and broke my heart, the least you can do is go out with me one last time. Again, that sounds needy and desperate and will just completely backfire. Remember, your ex-girlfriend doesn't owe you anything. You have to treat her like an acquaintance you want to get close with. It's like somebody you've met for the first time. You have to approach it with that perspective. Now, what about on that actual first date? What's going to happen there? Well, ideally, you want it to be your ex-girlfriend's idea to get back together. You just want to be yourself, which again means attractive, fun, happy, and awesome. Do not talk about your past relationship or your breakup, of course. It'll never lead to any good. That relationship is over, and if you two actually do get back together, it will be a brand new relationship. That's the perspective you have to go in with. The old relationship is gone forever. There's no point digging old graves when you want to start a new life with your ex-girlfriend. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, this video only scratches the surface regarding all of the resources and advice you will need to get your ex-girlfriend back. For tons more advice, resources, tips, specific text messages, timelines, and a complete step-by-step action plan that you will need to get her back, check out the personal coaching site and free video presentation over at exgirlfriendplan.com by clicking the link below this video in the description. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up, and leave some comments if you like what you've seen here today, and if you think this info could be of use to other guys going through the same thing you are right now. 
Also, I try to personally respond to all my comments and offer any one-on-one advice I can. If you want to get your ex-girlfriend to come crawling back to you and beg you to get back together with her, then you have to check out the free video right now over at exgirlfriendplan.com. By visiting exgirlfriendplan.com, these are just some of the things you will learn to help get your girlfriend back. And remember, it doesn't matter why the two of you broke up. And it doesn't matter if she's with another guy right now. You have to visit exgirlfriendplan.com if you ever want to win her heart again. I know how hard it is when you can't get your ex-girlfriend to answer your calls or reply to your text messages. I know the feeling of waking up every morning and being completely drowned in depression and heartache. Get answers to your specific questions now, such as, Why won't she talk to you? Why did she leave you? What can you do to get her back? How to make yourself undumpable. Exgirlfriendplan.com delves into the secret psychology behind why you lost your ex-girlfriend in the first place and how you can fix things permanently with her, guaranteed. So if you want your ex-girlfriend on her knees begging you to be with her again, then don't delay a second longer. If you know in your heart that this girl is the one for you, then you have to visit exgirlfriendplan.com right now. I know that feeling of anger and rejection, and I know about all the questions that run through your head while you're lying in your own bed. The video and coaching over at exgirlfriendplan.com will teach you exactly what you're doing wrong. And trust me, you're probably doing something that is killing your chances of ever getting back with her right now. In this video, my friend will reveal a few psychological tricks you can use that will get your ex-girlfriend to miss you desperately and want you back in her life. These tips work so well that she'll think it was her idea to get back together with you. The reason I like the program over at exgirlfriendplan.com is that you're told exactly what to do, so you can't really mess it up. There's actually a proven psychological formula for tapping into primal human urges. In fact, women are fighting to take this video down because they think that the tactics used in the video are manipulative, meaning they work too well. Plus, exgirlfriendplan.com talks about three brutal mistakes that you're probably making right now that are killing your chances of ever getting back with your ex-girlfriend. Visit exgirlfriendplan.com right now, even though you may have been brutally dumped, even if she says she hates your guts, even if she's already happily dating another guy. It is not over. It's far from over. In fact, you can have her back, melting in your hands like putty. P.S. Don't be that guy three years down the road thinking what could have been. Take action right now and check out exgirlfriendplan.com before it's too late and she slips away from you forever.